We are back with our air gun hunting series in Patagonia. And in the previous episode, we went out after invasive European rabbits. After being humiliated by strong winds with the 22 caliber, we switched to the 30 caliber FX impact, headed out for round two, and had a relatively successful afternoon, managing to take a few good shots from close range. In this video, we are back out again for round three, and we have the FX impact once again, hoping for a few more good shots on camera. We have Claudio Flores from Patagonia Air Guns Chile on camera duty this evening, and we're hoping for a smooth start. Well, out here again, uh, it's about five o'clock, six o'clock now, um, but we're way more prepared this time. First of all, we've got a bigger caliber, we've got 30 caliber, which handles the wind much better. Um, but second of all, the wind has actually calmed down and it's a little bit warmer. So uh, we, we're moving around a bit now. We found a, a bank here that looks quite promising, so we're just gonna lie and wait. It's about 60 meters away, so it's just a matter of being patient and, and hopefully we can get a few. But feeling a lot more comfortable now than we were earlier, so hopefully it's good. Well, from 60 meters I was expecting things to be easy, but the wind really took me by surprise. It didn't feel too bad where I was positioned, but the moment that pellet left the muzzle, it just got dragged to the left. Here's another shot from a little bit further, and you can see how the wind takes the pellet here. I'm expecting to drift a few centimeters left, but it gets carried way more than that. Really not a great start to the evening. Right, well this is getting uh, quite frustrating now. You don't always get to see my grumpy side. <laughs> But, um, I mean, we're not far from these rabbits. We're maybe 60 meters. And we've got a, a target maybe that size to hit, which should not be difficult at all by anyone's standards. And we've had two guns, the Wildcat and the Impact, which are extremely, extremely precise. They're really accurate guns. Even if you've got an extremely precise gun, like the Impact, if you can't adjust for the wind, it's useless. It, you'll hit left and right, left and right. It's... It's pointless having a super accurate gun if you can't do your part, so I can blame myself and say that I'm a bad shooter. But if you, if you don't know what the wind's doing between yourself and your target, you've got no chance. And I'm afraid we're just getting schooled at the moment by the wind. The sad thing is that this could be avoided if we were shooting, even if I was shooting the 2-2 impact with um, those Nielsen slugs, half as much wind drift as the 30 caliber with pellets. And that should say something about the fact that actually this can be, this is a problem that can be fixed. So rant over, uh, hopefully <laughs> I can hit something now, but it, it has been very frustrating. Um, and the sad thing is that it, it could be avoided, but I'm working on that. I'm hoping next time come out with the 2-2 barrel with the Nielsen slugs, at like 45, 50 foot pounds. It'll be much better than this, but ah. There's another one up there, so let's see if we can get it right this time. Well, I got it right that time. Crazy thing is I had to hold a few mils and there's really not that much wind right now. I would expect a 30 caliber to do better, even though I haven't had much experience with 30 calibers. But yeah, that's good. I'm happy. I feel a bit better now. <laughs> let's keep going. We spent some more time just waiting, hoping for another opportunity, but as the wind starts picking up, we decide to take a break and retrieve the rabbit I just shot. We leave him in a bush so we can come back for him later, and we move on. Our hunting spot today is quite open with not much cover, so we know we might have to take some long shots. We can't make the wind disappear, but we can be smart about it and walk into the wind which should minimize the crosswind factor when a shot presents itself. And that's exactly what happens as we spot a rabbit under a bush about 90 meters away and I lean against a tree for a standing shot. Well, there you go guys. 90 meters on a jackrabbit. Wasn't so sure about the shot, but the wind's blowing quite a lot but um, from where I was standing there I felt it come pretty much straight on so I just hold over about four mils and let the gun do the rest so I'm happy with that I was a bit nervous there because you know struggling so much earlier in the wind but a 90 meter shot standing up against a tree looking through a scope cam I don't think you get much better than that so 
I'm very happy. Let's go check him out. Well, there you go. It wasn't a perfect brain shot. It was actually just below the brain, but the 30 caliber has enough power to, you know, have that concussive damage. So, um, did the job. Happy with that. We get another opportunity from a similar distance shortly afterwards, but this time yeah. the wind is blowing from my right. I wasn't so sure if I'd hit it or not, but the scope cam shows the pellet impact just behind the front leg and we were able to retrieve him from the hole. So if you see this little black blue berry in my hand, this is Calafate and it's unique to Patagonia. You only get these here, you don't get them anywhere else. Um, and apparently they're really good to eat. It's really good. They grow on a little tree. Uh, berries are all over the tree and you have them with uh, a drink, what's it called? Pisco. Pisco. Pisco Calafate. So it's something I've learned. It's really cool. <laughs> We keep on moving and we pass plenty of rabbit warrens so we know the rabbits are definitely around and sure enough after a fair bit of walking we eventually find them. I know I'm in for some more long shots so I try to position myself directly into the wind and I take a practice shot at a piece of hardened sand just to make sure that I have my holdover correct. It looks pretty good so I'm confident enough to take some crazy long shots like this and it could have honestly gone either way but all I can do is watch as these pellets pass just millimeters on either side of these rabbits. Third time lucky though, unfortunately not captured through the scope cam, but this shot is from about 140 meters. At this point I started to feel a little bit more comfortable with the 30 caliber and felt much better about my ability to judge the wind correctly and when this rabbit popped up at about 80 meters I decided to go for it. Difficult opportunity. I think I gauged it pretty well. I think I just just shot over his head. I tend to rather want to overcompensate for drop than undercompensate. I'd rather a shot miss over the top of an animal's head than go low and injure it in the body. So uh, it was a risk I was willing to take, and you know, thankfully it did hit high, not low. It's just how hunting goes. <laughs> yeah. Another two rabbits show up and I'm able to use my extreme bench rest skills here as my first shot flies left and I have to correct my hold. Yeah, Second rabbit stays put so I use the same hold and I take another good headshot. Right, well I shot two rabbits there. First one on the scope cam and the second one I took the scope cam off while it was processing and, and took a shot. White rabbit and then a black rabbit, so I'm happy with that. It's a good way to end the day. Um, yeah, it's been tough. Wind has really um, taken us to task and taught us some lessons. Well, taught me some lessons. Claudia is used to this. But um, it's been very tough, but we've finished, finished on a high note there, so I'm very happy. Two good headshots. Let's go fetch them. We were ready to wrap up and go home, but when we spot about 20 rabbits just chilling between about 70 and 100 meters away, we decide to set up and take a few shots. The wind is really blowing at this point, but I take aim at the closest rabbit about 70 meters away and I put him down with a clean headshot. One of the rabbits decides to hang around, so I take the scope cam off, reload, and again I get to use some extreme bench rest skills here. Two more down. First shot, perfect. Oh, still a lot of wind, but good shot. I'm getting used to this gun now. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's go take a look. Here's the scope cam replay of that first shot, and I did get a little bit lucky here. 
as the pellet drops a little bit low and the ricochet bounces the pellet straight through his head. Right guys, so there's a few more rabbits that we just shot now. Um, I think we're going to call it there. It's been a fantastic day. Started off quite frustrating. We started off with the 2-2 Wildcat and as the wind picked up it just got very, very difficult. Pretty much impossible. I mean we had, we had pellets drifting like this much in the wind. It's very difficult. So went back home, had some coffee, relaxed a bit, um, put the scope that was on the Wildcat onto the Impact which was set up in 30 caliber. 30 caliber, I'm not used to 30 caliber at all. I don't use 30 caliber in South Africa. So on one side it's an advantage to have practice with a, a 22 and then to come out here and have a gun that's technically better in the wind. But on the other hand, it's, it's something that I'm not used to. So I almost had to learn this, the trajectories um, and the way the wind drifts of this gun from scratch today. And I think I did a pretty good job <laughs> towards the end of the day, I started off really slow and um, wasn't sure what, how much the pellet was going to drift in the wind and then towards the end once I got, got an idea of what was happening um, I managed to take some, some pretty decent shots, I think I recovered fairly well but um, got this black rabbit towards the end which is something quite unique, I've shot a black rabbit once before in the UK when I was um, doing some rimfire rabbit hunting there um, in 2015 with Kayak Bryn and Air Arms um, but it's the second one I've got, it's pretty cool. The impact has done its job. I would have liked to have used slugs to be honest because the pellets just really, very, really, really struggle in this wind with their really low BCs. High BC slugs would have really helped me. But either way, we got the hang of it. And once you get the hang of it with an accurate gun like this, it becomes much easier. So I'm very happy with the way it worked out. I'm very happy with the equipment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.